So this is my uh, starting point to, to, to think about how physical education can contribute to this health-related issue. So that's why I focus on the affective domain, affective learning. However, uh, the problem is the dominant view that physical education's main contribution to health and well-being is to promote physical, physical activity and physical fitness. For instance, many of physical education teachers might consider that all children need to be as active as possible, like be active. And I suppose MBPA, the concept of, of MBPA, uh, is a represented um, uh, thing of this notion. So in this sense, traditionally in physical education, learning in the affective domain is viewed as a hoped for byproduct of physical activity, as opposed to um, intentional curricular policy. But nevertheless, I would, I would like to note that being active is absolutely vital for physical education. I don't have uh, any criticize for this. Physically active, physical activity is absolutely vital for physical education. But point is, it should, it should not be a central concern in this uh, situation. So I have a key question and respond. With its response, special responsibility for health and well-being, how can physical education respond to rising mental health issues? And my response is to explore the possibilities of pedagogies of affect, uh, where affective learning is an explicit goal of school physical education. And this is my uh, supervisor, Professor David Kirk. And he said, uh, pedagogies of affect uh, refers to the interaction of curriculum, teaching, and assessment to produce affective learning as a directory and intentionally plus outcome. And there has been increased attention to pedagogies of affect where learning in the affective domain is branded for and intended rather than hoped for and byproduct. And why pedagogies of, of affect is important? Well, I'd say uh, here uh, it'd be useful to quote uh, Don Harrison's word. He, uh, unfortunately, he passed away a few a few years ago, but he said, this is a, the quotation in 1995 as a rationale for pedagogies of affect. He said, affective learning occurs only when it is branded for and expressed exemplified by someone who is present reflect the desired qualities. So if you want to achieve effective learning, you need to intend and plan for this particular purpose. So this is a rationale for effective learning and the pedagogies of affect. And effective learning is generally associated with uh, psychological and emotional uh, well-being and include mental health. For example, motivation, enjoyment, self-concept, and self-esteem. And resilience uh, has been emerged in the pedagogical literature recently. And I identified this concept emerging in the literature. So the first one, uh, motivation, uh, can be uh, defined by several theories. Uh, but among them, self-determination theory, it, which is called SDT. Uh, this is, I, I also use this theory. Uh, it's dominant, uh, dominated to use in the, the recent literature because this is a multi-dimension, the framework to analyze motivation and it's associated a psychological well-being uh, such as autonomous motivation and basic needs, needs uh, basic psychological need satisfaction. And second, uh, affective outcomes, um, uh, emotional responses, including enjoyment, interest, satisfaction, effort, boredom, pleasure, fear, and worry 
could be categorized as uh, emotional responses. And self-concept uh, refers to an individual's descriptive and evaluative perceptions of oneself, such as perceived competence, body image, and self force. And so some studies addressed the student resilience and uh, stress coping as effective learning in physical education in the, in the literature. And this is my publication uh, talking about um, affective learning in physical education. I, I did a systematic review. And the, the, the purpose of this paper was to carry out a systematic review of intervention programs that have uh, addressed affective learning outcomes within physical education and explore pedagogical practice in alignment with teaching basic contents and learning outcomes. So this is an open uh, publication. So you, if you uh, are interested in the uh, further reading um, with access to this uh, journal, Journal of Teaching in Physical Education. Then I assuming some of you may want to uh, think about, okay, so how do we teach the effective learning, uh, effective um, learning outcomes? In previous research, uh, they show a number of positive affective learning outcomes in physical education. For instance, a sport education model um, can help develop student personal qualities like cooperation and empathy, enjoyment, and motivation. And similarly, TPSR model, uh, which is teaching personal and social responsibility model, uh, the program is and also, motivational climate um, can be viewed as an example of pedagogies of effect. And then I, I, I will review a quick uh, explanation for each uh, models. So this is a sports education model, uh, which is developed by uh, uh, CDTOP in, in the US. The original purpose of sports education uh, is to offer the authentic sport experience in school physical education programs. And when planning a unit using a sport education model, there are six uh, features that helps to promote the learning outcomes. So the first notion is a seasons. Some of you may know that. And pre-season, main season, like the final phrases. So you might begin to plan how much time is allocated to each season. And the next key feature is the, the competition aspect. So you can use the games all the time. So for example, matches can be take place um, in the preseason, such as friendly matches, but also in the main season. And another aspect of unit planning is to plan for culminating events. This can be a ceremony, much like the Olympics, for example. And also we need to consider the feature of record keeping. Uh, students can record their own scores and perhaps reflect on their team performance. And this record can provide feedback for teams and encourage uh, goal setting for improvement. And another key feature is affiliation. So affiliation is how students uh, feel that they identify with the team and they uh, have a specific role within a uh, stable team. Oh. And the other feature of sports education is festivity. So sports should be exciting and then uh, meaningful to participants. So it is important to create a the festival atmosphere of sport. So if you are uh, interested in further reading, uh, please refer to these recommended uh, books uh, written by student of Peter Hasty, uh, published in 2019 and 2011. And teaching personal, personal and social responsibility, TPSL, is another pedagogical model that uh, helping students to take responsibility for their own at development and contribute to others' well-being as intended part of physical activity. So the fundamental notion of TPSL is to consider physical activity as a vehicle to teach life skills 
is the main uh, topic, I mean, uh, themes for TPSO. So, um, so TPSO model aims to achieve the five goals, uh, respecting the rights and feeding of others, safe motivation, safe direction, caring and helping others, and transfer of life skills outside the gym. And the researcher suggested a number of teaching strategies to, to achieve the goals. For example, teachers, um, the model, uh, respectful communication, and this would uh, involve communication with a whole group and individual student. Examples include uh, using student names, active listening and making eye contact, recognizing individually and showing interest in students. And it is important to set uh, expectations. A teacher's explains or refers to explicit, explicit behavior explanations. For example, uh, making all students know where students should be and what they should be doing at the given time. And opportunities for success. Um, so it means that a teacher structure lesson uh, so that the all students have opportunity to successfully uh, participate and be include everyone. Also, teacher structure activities that foster a positive social interaction. For example, a fostering interaction between students through a cooperation, teamwork. Uh, problem solving, uh, peer coaching, and partner choice where uh, communication is encouraged. And the leadership is also important. Um, teachers allow students to lead or be in charge of the, of the group. For example, it includes allowing students to, de to uh, demonstrate for the class and teach, uh, teach or lead exercise for the whole class or the coach uh, a team. And giving choices and voices is crucial. Uh, it is important for teachers to give students a voice during a, a program, such as inviting student questions or suggestions. So this is a, a quick review of what is TPSR model looks like. And motivational climate, uh, I think that uh, mastery motivational climate has been known globally as an effective teaching strategy. So the concept of motivational climate is considered as one of the most influential environment factors to create achievement goals in the context of teaching and learning practice based on achievement goal theory. This is a different theory from STT, achievement goal theory. So motivational climate is conceptualized as a, a situationally induced environment that uh, directs the goal of action. Uh, specifically, a mastery motivation climate emphasized uh, self referenced success, effort, and personal improvement, which is positive one. In contrast, uh, a performance motivation climate focused on social comparison with, with others, so which is not good, uh, basically. And uh, the target model, uh, the target stands for uh, task, authority, recognition, grouping, evaluation, and time. So the tasks are designed to include all students by having imbued variety of sufficient, sufficient flexibility. So you, the teachers need to the design a task that all students get enjoyed or get involved. And also the structure allows students to make choices and provides opportunities for decision making. So this is a similar uh, strategy for other uh, sport education model and TPSR model as well, like uh, giving, uh, offering choices to, to promote the student's self decision making. And recognition is focused on effort and improvement uh, rather than a uh, social comparison with others that's focused on what yourself and effort and improvement. And a grouping structure allows students to work with others of their own choices. And evaluation are uh, private and based on individual improvement that progress. So this is a, a similar notion 
uh, with uh, recognition uh, part. And the time structure allows students to determine the length of time they spend the practicing various tasks. So this is also um, the same strategy of offering choice. The teachers offer the choice to students, like how, how, how many times, uh, how how long times you can uh, the student can get in uh, involved in activity. So this is a basic strategy um, to promote effective learning to student. Then this is a literature review that uh, people have already known that. Then let's move on to my research uh, studies. So the literature shows the, the number of effective teaching methods for effective learning outcomes. However, these studies are all intervention study. So it should be a was doing an observation study that naturally occurring in schools because it can be it can gain more direct evidence uh, of teachers' actual behavior to achieve effective learning outcomes because it has high ecological validity. So you can see what is happening, uh, actual happening in physical education. So now, now I'm going to introduce two studies that I've done during my PhD in Scotland. So study one is lesson observation and analysis of teacher behavior and people responses, which is drawing on quantitative design. So study two consisted of self-confrontation interview with some teachers uh, selected from study one. And self-confrontation interviews refers to teachers own reflection while watching uh, recorded videos of their own lesson. So in that way, data can be uh, corrected in terms of teachers' knowledge, expectations, and intentions behind the observed teaching behavior. So research questions for study one, uh, how do teachers behave in physical education lessons and how does teacher teaching behavior affect um, affect learning? So this is my research questions for study one. And understanding what is happening in physical education it's really complex, as you can imagine. But uh, when looking back at the literature, you can find self-determination theory, SDT, is quite useful to understand this complexity. So SDT has been most commonly used to identify need supportive teaching and need supportive teaching. So this is a proxy to find out pedagogies of effect. And because need supportive teaching can uh, promote positive affective outcomes directly, on the other hand, need supporting teaching produce less desirable affective learning outcomes. So SDT is a broad framework to understand a dynamic link between teaching and people's motivation and psychological wellness, and thus views representative of mental health in turn. So that's why I adapted SDT in this study. The main idea behind SDT is that every human being has a three basic psychological needs, which is autonomy, which is mean, which means a feeling of feeling a sense of psychological freedom when carrying out activities, and competence. Uh, which means the feeling of effectiveness when mastering task and the greatness, uh, which means the feeling of connectedness, the relationship, the, the connect with others. So these needs are required to be supported to facilitate autonomous motivation, which in turn mental health and psychological well-being uh, as well. Then uh, I'm talking about a uh, method I, I used for this study. So participants were 20 physical education teachers across Scotland, and there are uh, 300 
184 uh, children. I recruited these teachers who had a stated interest in teaching for effective learning. So this is a purposive sampling approach. And in terms of observing teaching behavior, I used need supportive and need supportive teaching behavior observation tool, which is developed by scholars at Ghent University um, in Belgium. Uh, this tool can be a proxy of teaching behavior for effective learning. And people questionnaire data was also uh, generated in this study and analyzed in relation to teacher behavior data. So I asked the people to fill out a set of questionnaires at the end of the observe, observe the lesson. So for data analysis, I used multi-level regression analysis to examine, uh, examine the relationship between observed uh, teaching and effective learning. So this is a quantitative uh, design. And I give you uh, additional information about uh, observation too. Uh, in terms of new supportive teaching behavior, uh, there are uh, teaching styles to be assessed, which are autonomy support, structure, and relating the support. And 90 items in total there. So you can find out some examples of each area. Uh, for example, autonomy support uh, means identify student personal interest by engaging in a dialogue with student and accept, understand how students feel. So we have uh, three items from there and structures for 11 items and rating support for five items. And I called it uh, a teaching behavior in five minutes intervals, so five minutes throughout. So watch the video five minutes and go through all items and code it from zero to four, and this is a, a five scale. Then the sum score, uh, for the total duration of the lesson was divided by a number of coded intervals uh, to compute, compute the mean scores for each item. Then the mean, the mean score of knee supportive teaching were calculated by uh, averaging the mean score of each teaching style. So this is about observation uh, too. Then the findings. Uh, so the result of multi multi-level regression analysis showed that overall observed need supporter teaching was significantly related to need support satisfaction for autonomous motivation. And in people level, a path from need satisfaction has significant positive direct relationships uh, with autonomous motivation and positive effect. However, I, I did not find any significant relationship between observed needs thwart uh, and the people's outcomes. So I just, I'm thinking uh, why this happened. So further analysis may be needed for this uh, analysis. And also I, I tell you, uh, this result is now under review for the publication. So maybe I hope uh, I can publish uh, this uh, paper uh, and soon. Then uh, when the focusing on the teaching behavior, teaching teacher behavior, uh, this graph might be of interest, I think. So this is a graphical representation of teaching style. And then the particle line, the particle line uh, shows the mean score of need supportive teaching and horizontal one shows the mean score of need support and need support. So, and one dots, these dots uh, means one teacher and then teachers in the same schools have the same color. So for example, the green one, and this teacher and this teacher uh, worked in the same school. Then when I looked at the result, I thought it can be divided for divided into four types, like like this. The top left uh, is high supportive and less support. So we, it, it seems to be ideal teaching for the pedagogies of effect. And the top right is high supportive but more uh, support. 
the bottom left, uh, I can say um, this is no teaching, like teachers do nothing so much. And teachers in the bottom left, bottom right, I would say they are like to the traditional uh, teaching because they are more need uh, support and need support and like, more controlling, but this needs is supportive. This more like a skill based teaching and a more traditional teaching the aspect. Then if we look again, the this the the distribution is like this. So it's a like a very interesting to see like four teachers uh located in this area, the four teachers there, and majority of the teachers is allocated in this the area. So I'm going to use this graph again to pick up uh, the data for study two. So uh, that was quantitative data that reflects uh, what we observed the lesson in physical education. I think that observation too was very useful, but I did not know what was teacher's intentions of the observed teaching behavior which will be focused on study to uh, qualitative data. So we wanted to know, are teachers aware of their teaching behavior and how do teachers explain their behavior? So this is a research question for study two. And in this study, the participants were a Four teachers uh, selected for study one, um, two males and two females. And here, a method of critical incident analysis using a self confrontation interview would be useful because critical incident analysis can be used to analyze and evaluate critical moments in the teaching process. So, in this study, it refers to the three moments in particular, such as and offering meaningful choices, and providing feedback and individual interactions, which is also uh, based on any supportive teaching behavior. And self-confrontation interview allows the participant to explain what they do and the knowledge they used during the lesson. So as the interview data generation, the basic strategy was asking teachers, can you talk me through what was happening here? This is a basic uh, question for me. And sometimes I uh, prompted the teachers by asking like, what was the issue here? And what are you thinking at the moment? And then uh, can you please tell me more about this, the children and these children? And then I prompted the teacher to, to talk through what was happening and then uh, intentions behind the uh, observed teaching behavior. Then uh, this uh, diagram uh, shows uh, what teaching styles look like, which come from the study one data. And for today, uh, I'm going to show self-confrontation interviews and the videos uh, from these three teachers named Amelia, uh, Kenny, and Ben. So it's all Scottish uh, P teachers. So they had obviously different teachers, uh, different teaching styles, as you as you can see. Like Ben is very high needs support and need uh, more uh, control teaching and less need support. And Amelia is a very good teacher, uh, less need support, but high need support. And Kenny, it seems like uh, less need support and at the same time, less uh, needs support. So three different teaching styles. And this is a participant profile. So it shows uh, years of teaching experiences, and the best contents, and people's grade, the and number of people's and teaching style. Like in Amelia's class, the Amelia is uh, just graduated uh, university, and this is uh, her first year of the, of the school. Um, and he, uh, she taught badminton class to, as to 
uh, girls only. So S2 means secondary school, second, uh, second, second grade of secondary school. And this is a class size. And Ben um, worked as uh, in the same uh, schools uh, with Amelia, and he uh, has a experience, two years experiences of teaching, and he taught basketball to boys only class. So S1 is uh, the first grade of secondary school uh, children. And Kenny uh, worked in the different, different schools. He has uh, five years teaching experiences, and he taught uh, like a modified ball games. It's like a handball. And then his class is a mixed, gender mixed class, co-educational setting. And then a quite big uh, class size, 28 pupils there. So this is uh, um, the, the participant profile for this uh, study. Then I show you uh, first Amelia's teaching. So this is a, a scene where uh, the media offers choices of activity, so which is uh, one important strategy of autonomy support. So I going to play the video, but this is an online meeting, so I guess the video is always will be um, not not going to be uh, not going to the play smoothly, not going to the smooth well. I mean the play not play uh, the lagging. So but. I hope you can get the catch the information while the happening is lesson. There are rackets. Your next challenge. There are lots of shuttles in this room. There are rackets. There are hoops. There are cones. There are nets. And there are badminton courts. You can choose whether it's been a group of four, a group of two, a group of three. But what I want your group to decide, because you're going to be in charge, is what stroke you're going to work on. You're going to create your own drill, just like what we've been doing for the past three weeks. But you can decide what stroke you want to practice, if you want to use any equipment, and you can make it up to work on a stroke you want to improve. We're going to do that for about six minutes. Any questions? So I apologize uh, if the video is not uh, the phrase well, but I hope you can get uh, important uh, information in this class. So Amelia allows the peoples to decide which group and what stroke they wanted to work on in the badminton lesson. So she suggested them to use hoops and the cones to create their own exercise on the stroke. So this is uh, the high interaction uh, in terms of offering choices to people. And let's hear now what he said, what she said, having seen this video. Okay, so I'm just giving them that autonomy because. I know they're quite able and they're motivated, so I was interested to see what they would come up with with that. And it's quite good because I can sometimes get ideas from them and use drills that they've created in, in other classes. I don't think I could do that with all of my classes. It maybe needs to be more structured, but I know that they work well, so I was able to just let them. So this is what he said, what she said uh, after watching this uh, video. So she knew offering choices can work to be motivated for the peoples. And she mentioned that uh, she runs from what peoples come up with. So also uh, she recognized that her stra teaching strategy uh, takes into account the achievement level of class and the peoples. So we can understand that her knowledge of this class uh, is a factor in her giving them choices. So, I mean, she knows this class well. He knows uh, these the children in this class well. And this is another thing in the Amelia's class. And the Amelia uh, gave the individual interaction uh, through a focus on skill learning, like overhead career. So I, I'm going to play the video now. 
So see when you're back here, what would be the right decision? Yeah, over here clear. Let's see, I'll watch your technique. Just play your game and I'll watch it. That's all right. So, and I know why. See how you've got the racket and you're going backwards like this? Get back, nice side step, nice and fast. So make sure the shuttle's always in front of you. The shuttle's like over your head and you're chasing it back. So make sure you're fast, you're speedy. So make sure you're back and the shuttle's always in front of you and play it back there. So quick feet, which is your strength, is all you need. That's it, quick feet, quick feet, get back. Excellent, much better. You hit it, exactly. Those quick feet to get behind that shuttle. That's all it is. You're there. You'll get it. Yeah, just a wee bit further than that shoe. Quick feet, quick feet. Perfect. So much for you can't do it. You just did it in one minute there. Did it brilliantly. Well done. So um, I can't hear very clearly what the girl this girl said, but Amelia get closer to the girl and use uh, the language that this girl feels comfortable with. And watch this video and her response was like this. For her, I think it gave her the confidence mm -hmm. to be able to keep trying at it rather than just giving up. And she did hit it, yeah. which was a success for her. Yeah. But okay. looking at it now, I should have reinforced going sideways more. She was faster, but she wasn't turning sideways on. Um, so successful in the fact of her confidence, but technique, maybe not so, I'd say. So addressing the uh, small success uh, arose uh, this girl to enhance her confidence and uh, motivation, uh, motivation to her to keep trying, uh, which is a central concern of Amelia. Also, she mentioned he would have done differently, and then, like, she was very uh, self critical about her teaching after watching the video. So, this is a characteristic of Amelia's teaching. Then, um, let's watch Ben's teaching. It's a different a class, different teacher, but same school. So, this was a task of 2v2 uh, defending in the basket cross. Go. Oh, go on. Remember, you don't need to pass it straight away. Okay, you were like, I need to get rid of that dog. Okay, wait till, wait till you get some speed. Okay. Okay, it's got to be short, but Ben gave feedback to the boy, uh, but and uh, said, but uh, this is a critical uh, notion. The Ben said everything. You know, without uh, letting him uh, discover a problem himself. So this is more controlling teaching, needs sword teaching, said everything. Then this is Ben's reflection after I watched this video. So that's me trying to just Wait. give as much individual feedback as right. possible. Um, I'll try throughout a lesson to give every pupil mm -hmm. individual feedback. So this is a small class of 12, 10, 12. So I'll be able to give individual feedback. Uh, but sometimes I've got a class of 30 and I'm not able to get around every pupil. So I try my best to say, like, well done, right, Colin, always using the names. Um, makes our learning experience more personalised. I'm getting to know them. Um, I think it's important for the people that... Um, that I know them. I've got built constantly building a relationship, positive relationship with them. So the band said a uh, very good point in terms of uh, need supportive teaching. For example, the importance of getting to know the peoples and using uh, their first names. However, as far as as far as I observed, his teaching was a teacher directed way. It's a very di teacher directed, way, teacher centered teaching which is not ideal teaching for effective learning. And this is another scene in the Ben's class. 
So let's watch this. Ready? Go! Let's go, Now you. Are you getting closer? Right, stop, 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 stop. Right? You need to get closer, closer into me. That, reach your hand out to touch the ball. That's where you want to be. Okay? Good. See, you, you, you committed too early. Okay, you jumped right in there. Okay, you need to hang back a little bit. All right? Oh, well done. Well done. See? He waited here. Watch, Colin. He waited in between here. He waited, he waited, and then he made his move. Okay, good. So it's, it's very interesting because it seems to be okay, but Ben asked everyone to perform the same way as he instructed without any questions. So like uh, he, want, he wanted the, the children to be performed in the same way. And there's, I, can, I can't observe any inputs from the peoples. And he talked through what was happening in this scene in the in the in his self reflection interviews here. I showed him that one. I showed him that I want him here an arm length away from the defender, showing it again. And so okay. just in another demonstration, just so they are absolutely clear what I right. want them to be achieving here. The whoever was defending there done it exactly how I wanted them to, was to stay in between the two defenders to try and intercept the ball. I uh, watched the play, he was successful in it, so mm -hmm. I need to say, stop them and say, right, this is why he was successful. Mm -hmm. I don't just say, good, well done, mm -hmm. and then walk away. I'll say, right. good, right, this is why it was good. So it seems like he involved in, uh, in the direct uh, instruction and then Ben acknowledged that he needs to offer feedback in an effective way, which is substantive feedback, like a well done. And this is why you were done. So this is very uh, good. Uh, however, he set up a task that has uh, only one correct answer. So this is uh, not an uh, ideal uh, strategy for effective learning. And this is different teacher and a different school, uh, the Kenny Cross. Uh, so let's watch the, the videos again. Matthew, move forward, move forward, let you move forward. Siga, 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 move forward. Catch. That's it. Oh. Now, I can see you doing much more than standing still here, Judah. All right? Okay, I want you to try and get involved, all right? Because your blue team are struggling about you. Okay? Yeah? All right? Let's see you move your feet a wee bit. Come on. Throw it to someone in your team. Oh, give it away. That's it. No one, move forward. Matthew, move forward. Right, Susan, now this is where you need to move forward a little bit, right? Because your team's won the ball for you. So come up here with me. Follow me. Oh, save. That's it. Oh, well done, Noah. Matthew, move forward. Noah, move forward. Noah. See when your team's got the ball, you want to move forward, okay? That's it. Now when the oranges have got the ball, you want to move back, Noah. All right? Okay. Ma so you can see um, this girl is just standing uh, near the goal and they're not uh, willing to participate in the game at all. And then also you can see okay, move forward. No. Yeah. Now, when they want now you can see this boy just moving the randomly and they're not uh, participating in the game effectively. And uh, Kenny, this teacher, uh, tried to encourage these two kids, um, but it seems uh, it didn't seem to the work well. And watch this video, and here is uh, his response. 
both of them are, are additional sport needs kids. Um, so they just need a bit more time um, and reassurance and than the, than the rest of the kids. Um, so I'm just trying to show him where the space is so it becomes really clear that they need to move forward and stand here or get in a good space. Otherwise, they'll just kind of stand and not become as involved as it could have been. So I learned uh, that Kenny said that these kids uh, have uh, additional support needs and it seems to struggle to find out uh, how these kids get involved in the lessons. And this is a discussion point, but uh, this game in this video might be too difficult to play for these kids. But Kenny did not mention that. So even though he said uh, moving forward and finding a space to these kids, but he did not teach very and effectively. So this is uh, his reflection. Then from these findings, uh, I would say that need supportive teaching is a proxy to measure precisely the teacher the people interactions for effective learning. And we suggest that how well teachers know the pupils at the individual level is crucial uh, to implement teaching for effective learning, uh, effective learning outcomes. So teachers need to get to know the pupils well. And it might be say it might be a challenging issues for uh, teachers to reflect on their own teaching uh, critically. So our data tries to find the question of what professional development should be. But for example, Ben, Ben's reflection is very good, but it's not a self critical uh, comment. We can see that any self critical comments. So he Ben seems like okay, I'm I'm very good job and I'm doing a great job, and then um, it might be challenging issues to reflect their own own teaching critically. And then at the same time, uh, I think it is also true uh, that this method of confrontational interview can promote teachers' uh, self reflection, as I said, and the self confrontational interviews with videos uh, can be beneficial to embed. Uh, the idea practice and then explore a pedagogies of effect for uh, our teachers. And this is a publication um, including the, the self confrontation interview data uh, published in uh, PESP, uh, Physical Education and Pedagogy. Uh, so if you uh, are interested in more, uh, please, uh, please access to uh, this paper. Then uh, finally, I'd like to note uh, about future research that I'm thinking now. And the further key question would be to explore the antecedent of teachers need support or need support. So I think this is important questions because we need to know uh, why teachers engage in need support or need support. And these evidence could be useful for teacher education to educate university students, for example, to become more need supportive teachers. And in relation to this, a question might arise whether it is possible for teachers, including pre-teachers, to learn to use a particular pedagogies of effect. So this could be an uh, intervention study to look at uh, the process of changes of teaching behavior for effective learning over time. So this is uh, the further questions for me. And then I do my PhD study in Scotland, but now um, I'm trying to uh, get a data correction with the same uh, strategy, same method in Japanese context, in Japanese school. So that is the end of my presentation. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, please ask me. And any uh, critical comments are also uh, welcome. So thank you for listening. Uh, then again, I, I would be happy to answer any questions for this. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for the very interesting presentation, Dr. Taraka.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the discussion session. So if you have any question, question on the chat platform, uh, sekarang kita telah sampai pada sesi tanya jawab. Apabila Bapak dan Ibu memiliki pertanyaan, silahkan acungkan tangan atau tulis di kolom komentar dan akan saya sampaikan ke narasumber. Oke, okay, um, kita punya satu pertanyaan dari Dwi Adnan Givari ya. Tanya adalah berdasarkan pemaparan tentang pembelajaran efektif dalam pendidikan jasmani terdapat as aspek target yang salah satunya adalah time. Uh, jadi Dwi menanyakan berapa lama waktu yang dibutuhkan seorang pelatih untuk mencetak atlet yang mencapai tingkat profesional. Oke, okay, so uh, Aishin, we have a question from our student. So he asked about target. One okay. of the uh, a character in target is time, right? So he asked, how long does it take for a coach to create a professional athlete that uh, have credibility in terms of uh, in terms of uh, what is it skills and uh, other values for professional uh, sport coaching? Yeah, professional sport. Uh, I'm not sure how um, a specific uh, context for professional coaching uh, context, but I, I'm talking. I was talking about uh, physical education lessons, and then this uh, structure uh, means like teachers need to need to offer uh, the choices to spend the time. Like how 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 long do you need? to involve in this activity, like in this lesson. So instead of teachers uh, providing a specific time to involve in study, involve in the activity. So I'm not sure uh, in the, the professional coaching, um, professional sports coaching, how long a time will be needed to, to perform the skills. So, but in the physical education lessons, it's important to offer student choices to decide what time and how long time the teachers need to spend to engage in the activity for uh, effective learning is that is that answer to your question okay jadi uh, tadi uh, pembicara menjelaskan bahwa kalau untuk profesional atlet uh, dia sendiri kurang tahu karena ini konteksnya adalah konteks pada pembelajaran penjas dan harus di uh, yang lebih penting ada memberikan penawaran kepada murid dan juga guru kira-kira berapa lama yang mereka, berapa lama waktu yang mereka butuhkan supaya proses pembelajaran tercapai. Barangkali seperti itu ya. Barangkali karena kita uh, ada di pendidikan jasmani gitu di penjas mungkin pertanyaannya bisa lebih mengarah ke tema kali ini. Seperti itu. Baik, uh, we have another question from Shafira. Shafira silakan ditujukan langsung aja pertanyaannya. Uh, oke okay, Miss, thank you for your opportunity. Uh... Let me introduce myself. My name is Shafira from Physical Education, Health and Recreation. I want to ask if we if you want to work optimally in a group while they don't work, they while they don't want to contribute, but that's an obligation in the college process. Based in, uh, based on your experience, how to work in a group whose member have a different thoughts and motivation, especially with lazy people. Thank you. Um, sorry, I, I didn't I didn't get your the question query. So could you could you please um, say it again? Oh, sorry, you are, you are muted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if we want to work optimally in the group while they don't work to they while they don't want to contribute. Uh, but that's an obligation on a college process based on your experience, uh, how to work in a group whose member have a different mental stability and thoughts, uh, especially with the lazy people. So you, do you mean in the physical education context? Uh, so you, you may mention like a lot of the children in mixed who are uh, lack of motivation and then motivated uh, people included and then how how teacher how would teachers do is that is that your question 
Yes, it is. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, so it is good example. You can see the the Kenny's lesson, like uh, a girl just uh, not not willing to participate in the game, and the boy uh, just uh, moving around in the court. So the teachers, I think this is uh, quite often happening in physical education lessons, like including additional uh, support needs kids in there. And the teachers uh, may struggle with that to tackle these issues. And I think my suggestion is to, uh, for teachers uh, is to prepare for a different tasks for these kids. So not willing to, not stick with one thing, just prepare for different tasks for these kids if they are not willing to participate. So in the Kenny's example, the Kenny is very stick with um, running this lesson uh, with uh, just one, the same instruction, but these kids are not uh, willing to participate in it. So teachers may need to, to prepare an, another task to, to get involved in the games. So this is my suggestion. And also teachers uh, need to be uh, more interactions and more uh, involved in, in individualizations, like uh, prepare the different strategies to uh, depends on the people's needs, the people's uh, interest. So that is a basic of need support teaching as well. So not stick with one uh, instruction and one game. The teachers need to be uh, more a various aspect of the game. These are my suggestions for um, from this study. It is that is that answer to your question? Oke jadi uh, barusan uh, Aisyin mengatakan bahwa kalau ada anak yang tidak mau terlibat gitu ya Maka guru harus memberi tugas yang berbeda-beda Jadi ditentukan dan tugasnya harus berbeda-beda Dan guru juga harus lebih uh, lebih banyak berinteraksi dengan muridnya Seperti itu barangkali Ya apakah ada lagi pertanyaan? Silahkan menuliskan di kolom komentar atau langsung mengacungkan tangan saja Ya kita ada pertanyaan dari Karisma Karisma? Yes. Yes, you may deliver your questions directly to the speaker. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, before I tell about my, my question, I want to introduce myself. My name is Karis Majiz Ibrahim. And here I have a question. Uh, if for, from, that, from, from the presentation, it said that teachers need to know well about their purpose at the individual level for make teaching more effective learning, right? And about that, especially in here in Indonesia, uh, the purpose is really a lot when teaching in one time. It can be 60 till 70 purpose in one time. So is there have, is there have any strategies to resolve this and still increase the effective learning? Because it's pretty difficult if we have to know one by one all of the purpose or watch them in one time. That's mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, I think this is a very really good question. Uh, like the one lesson list uh, last uh, maybe 30 minutes uh, or just one hour. Well, effective learning, uh, you know, <coughs> is not only uh, just one moment. So you, you need to think more longer uh, the strategy to think effective learning outcomes. Uh, for physical education. So, but it is very important to, to think just one lesson and then be more need supportive teaching for the peoples. And you accumulated these teaching uh, strategies for a longer time, maybe affect learnings uh, that peoples can uh, develop the affect learning. So you can see more, uh, more longer the time to think about uh, affect the pedagogies for effective uh, learning, but also at the same time, it's important to get involved in, in need supportive teaching behavior in one lesson. And you can um, 
keep doing keep doing this to develop effective learning. What do you think is that is that answer you're looking for? Harisma, bagaimana apakah sudah puas dengan jawabannya? Ya, yeah, ma'am. It's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have another question from Pak Eka Nugraha. Pak Eka, silahkan. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Good morning, Isha. <laughs> Bu, karena saya takut saya tidak mengerti dan beliau juga tidak paham bahasa Inggris saya, mohon diterjemahkan saja. <laughs> Jadi ini saya mau menanyakan mengapa Jepang secara keseluruhan kalau mengubah sistem pendidikannya atau memperbarui konsep pendidikan pada abad ke-18, kalau nggak salah pada restorasi Meiji, intinya. Dan mengapa mereka perlu berubah dan mengapa harus berubah? Itu saja yang perlu ditanyakan kepada Esi. Terima kasih. Okay, so uh, he asked about why Japan changed their educational system in uh, 18th century. Restorasi Meiji. Apa pak? Bentar. Oh, in the uh, Meiji Restoration. So why Japan changed the educational system in uh, Meiji Restoration? That's the question. Uh, yes, I would say uh, Japanese national curriculum has been changes every 10 years. And the last change uh, was in 2008 and implemented all schools uh, from 2010. So the national curriculum has been changed um, in every 10 years. So. Uh, so this is a basic um, uh, system, education system, and the teachers need to follow this national curriculum. Uh, so this is how Japanese uh, education system changes. Is that, is that a clear answer to your question? Okay, jadi Pak, katanya uh, mereka itu mengubah sistem pendidikannya setiap 10 tahun, jadi diperbaharui, dan guru-guru harus mengikuti sistem yang terbaru. Kurang lebih seperti itu. Apakah sudah uh, pos dengan jawabannya Pak? Maksud saya memang mengapa berubah dan mengapa butuh mereka berubah pada saat itu pada waktu restorasi Meiji itu dan mengapa berubah begitu ya di kebutuhan mengapa berubah dan kenapa harus berubah gitu. So he asked why you need to change it the the uh... What is it? The need to change. Maybe, yeah, need maybe to change. you can explain the reason to change uh, at that time. A good question because I don't know. I'm not sure. It's uh, um, rules. It's like uh, regulations. Oh. Maybe maybe uh, in we look at another country. For example, in Scotland, uh, it's not same thing. It's not the case. The Scotland. The national curriculum has been changed in 2010, but it's not, it's, there's no rules to change every 10 years. But in Japan, there for some reasons, I don't know, I don't know why specific reasons, but this is a, uh, the policy, the policy rules to change um, the curriculum. But yeah, maybe I will, I will ask some of the expert to why, why we need to change Every 10 years. So thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, this is my um, good question. Thank you. Thank you. Asia. Baik, uh, apakah masih ada pertanyaan? Karena kita masih punya 15 menit untuk sesi tanya jawab. Oh, Oke. Okay. Ini yang sudah saya bertanya. Bunyi, silakan Bu Tite. Silakan Bu Tite. Baik. Uh, terima kasih. <laughs> Maaf, saya berbahasa Indonesia. Uh, tolong ditranslate oleh Bu Nia. Jadi, uh, tadi menarik sekali apa yang dipaparkan uh, berkaitan dengan uh, pembelajaran. Nah, ketika uh, pembelajaran berlangsung, itu tadi dijelaskan bahwa banyak model-model yang bisa diterapkan. Nah, apakah betul ketika kita mengajar, pembelajaran itu kan harus menarik, tidak boleh monoton, gitu ya. Sehingga dalam satu kali uh, proses pembelajaran kita menerapkan beragam model 
uh, mungkin bisa empat uh, atau tiga empat model kita terapkan tergantung kepada situasi dan kondisinya. Mohon uh, penjelasannya apakah yang seperti ini betul uh, untuk dilakukan. Terima kasih. Oke, okay, so as soon as she asked, uh, if is is it correct to use three or four different models in a lesson, or you only need to use one? Well, that might lesson. be a very good idea to to mix uh, models. So it depends on uh, mix. So you, you don't you don't have to uh, use just one the models. So it's hello. So just look at your the the children, and then in your local context. So you can you can choose what what uh, strategy can be useful uh, for your lessons. So I don't I don't I don't say you you have to uh, stick one uh, strategy. You can use uh, different strategies. Uh, depends on uh, the context. Jadi itu jawabannya Bu Tite, bagaimana? Apakah sudah bisa menjawab pertanyaan Bu Tite? Tergantung dari kebutuhan katanya. Ya. Berarti sudah sesuai ya ketika saya me memberikan informasi kepada para mahasiswa bahwa <tuh> itu terapkan banyak model gitu. Jangan hanya terpaku pada satu model ya. Hanya untuk memastikan berarti uh, betul gitu ya. Terima kasih. Oke okay, baik Bu, terima kasih. Uh, we also have another question in chat platform. From Mesarahmi, uh, she said that it's such a great presentation and interesting topics regarding the effective aspect of BE lessons. Uh, she has some questions. Um, in different demographic environments, the level of psychological needs of children may be different. For example, children who live in urban areas with different economic backgrounds and living environment will have different psychological needs, like those who live in a slum or a healthier, healthier home environment. So how to identify the psychological needs of children or students that we will make the best effective, effective learning for students at school? Then how can we identify that the teacher's expectations are sufficient for student behavior? Because if the teacher's expectations are too high, it is feared that it can burden students so that the expected learning cannot occur. So yeah, okay, those are two of questions. Yeah, thank you asking for the question. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, it may differ. Um, psychological need satisfaction uh, depends on the, the context, like um, in urban area or local area, or the slum area. But uh, so your question, how how you'd identify these um, this its elements? Well, I would say you can use a questionnaire. Uh, this is uh, already uh, validated and reliable questionnaire. You can use that. And also, if you uh, really want to know what kind of needs that the children uh, want, is like to take into account the individual uh, perspectives. Like you can do an interview, an individual uh, interview to the catch up information. Uh, individually and getting to know uh, children individually. So that is a, uh, uh, it takes a time and it, a lot of effort to this, but it, it might be, it must be an effective way to getting to know the people's individual uh, things. And how can we identify teachers' expectations are sufficient? Yes, so I think in, in this sense, you might need to uh, interview with teachers uh, to identify a teacher's expectations. And then, and also you can do a, like uh, a focus group interview. Uh, you, you can visit the schools if you, if you can do, visit the schools and then doing uh, the interviews uh, teachers and the people. So that is uh, like a qualitative uh, method uh, to identify a teacher's expectations and also how the teachers um, develop their, how their, their teaching uh, for effective learning outcomes. So you may need uh, a lot of time 
And this is like a based on intervention study. You can go uh, the schools and then the contact with teachers on a regular basis for a long term. So this is uh, another uh, the thing that is that research the things you can do uh, for a long term. Um, it might be a really good um, the evidence for um, professional development. A teacher's professional continuous development the things is that answer to your uh, question bagaimana bu mesa apakah sudah cukup menjawab pertanyaannya ya yeah, sudah cukup ibu thank you dr aishin baik terima kasih uh, we have another question from from pak yusuf ya yeah. uh, he asked as we know learning outcomes are measured in three domains cognitive psychomotor and affective domains regarding your beautiful presentation which domain is more dominant is it the same for every level of schooling it's mean for elementary school and secondary school or high school level so it's probably the same a question with mutiara sinta devi so yeah please okay so in physical education we have a four domains for running outcomes physical domain affect, uh, cognitive domain social domain and affect domain i think these running uh, outcomes in the four domains uh, will be needed in all school setting, elementary, secondary, and high school as well. So all, all levels, we need to do these learning outcomes in the four uh, domains. But the reality is the schools, many schools are uh, really focusing on the physical domain only, maybe. And then many, many physical teachers uh, are thinking about if children get active, social domain, affect domain can be occurred automatically. You know? So this notion is being active is a priority. Then social and cognitive and affective learning will be next because being active uh, will be occur uh, these three domains automatically. So, but I have a, uh, a critical notion for this. Affective learning social uh, domain as well is only occur when the teachers planned it for and intended for. So my suggestion is that teachers need to uh, think uh, affective learning should be the central and then if uh, the teachers want to be. So, it depends on the local context. It depends on the teachers. It depends on the peoples. If peoples, if children need to be more engaged and active, maybe it's a good idea to focus on being active. But if you focusing on mental health and effective learning, it's not. Uh, it's not the case. It's not ideal. The teaching as the same uh, traditional teaching. So it's a, this is my uh, answer. So based on what, on what we need. Okay. Okay, uh, we have another question um, from Difa. Uh, he asked, what is the teacher's role in sports learning when dealing with students with multiple personalities, especially physical education teachers? So what's your opinion? Mm -hmm. um, multiple personalities. Yes, again, so my, my suggestion is from my uh, studies, teachers need to get to know children's will at the personal level, uh, rather than like focusing on teaching lesson contents. First, the first thing teachers uh, need to prioritize uh, to get to know the people's will. So this is, uh, so in that sense, the teachers uh, will be successful in the building a good relationship with people. So, this can be a, a good uh, way to develop affective learnings as well. And then maybe that uh, physical domain uh, as well. So uh, teacher's role is uh, get, get the, the children's knows the will at the personal level rather than the, the whole class. So I think I, I, I assume the, the some of the teachers really struggle with this, just focusing on lesson contents, but this is important as well. But my suggestion is um, 
even outside of the gym, outside of the class, the physical education need to get to know the people um, more actively. Okay, uh, we have another question from Pare Sandi. Can effective mm -hmm. learning be implemented in online learning? If it can be implemented, what are the steps? Wow, good question. Um, yeah, that could be an online. Um, maybe need supportive teaching could be adapted in online teaching as well. Like the giving, uh, offering the choices and then giving the concrete feedback and then building relationship in the people's. Well, I guess this is more difficult to, to connect with teachers uh, online rather than the meeting in person, but it still could be uh, the possible to adapt new supportive teaching uh, online, even though this is online. Okay, uh, we have another question from Karisma. Uh, she said that she's interesting about physical education system in Japan. Is it more focused on sports skill performance or movement experience? Well, in the curriculum level, uh, Japanese national curriculum based on uh, competency-based curriculum, which is all, all, all skills are included, the physical activity, a physical domain, cognitive domain, and affective domains as well. Uh, but in the, the practical in the, in the practical area, mm -hmm. well, it is true that uh, many teachers uh, have a very clear uh, notion and a stated interest in affective domain and social uh, domain in physical education. But uh, it is also true that some of the PP teachers uh may think about more focusing on uh skill-based the practice like teach the sport uh effectively uh in in particular uh, uh younger teachers like who just graduate from universities um may uh, focusing on skill-based teaching because um they are uh, being to they, they, based on their experiences, they are like experienced with doing sports like a athlete. So he can get uh, stick with their own notion, their own experience. But in educational setting, that would be a different way. So that is um, maybe one of the problems in Japan, maybe uh, in other countries as well. Uh, in the curriculum levels, it's included. Uh, the holistic concept, physical, social, and affective cognitive. But in the practice, the P teachers may uh, focusing on technical based teaching. But we need to to change these uh, situations. Okay, uh, we have like three minutes. So if some of you, uh, kita masih punya tiga menit. Jadi kalau misalnya masih ada pertanyaan, uh, silahkan mengacungkan tangan saja ya, langsung. <tuh> Oke, okay, uh, it seems like everyone. Uh, Everyone already understand uh, with with your presentation. Uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. Uh, I'm sure all of us in here uh, learn so much from your uh, material. And uh, and now we are going to do a symbolic uh, appreciation for your participation. So thank you again for being a guest lecturer in the study program. Thank you very much. Uh, so if you have any other questions and like you have uh, any discussion point, please uh, contact me uh, to, to my email. Again, yeah, response to, and I'm happy to discuss further uh, 
you know, if you are interested in more. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So, uh, because time's already 30, so I think you already have another appointment. Dr. Teralka, so, oh, one minute. Uh, Mr. Yusuf wants to speak. Okay, thank, thank you, Ms. Uh, Bu Mia. And I see good morning. Good morning, I see. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for your beautiful presentations. We really appreciate say, your time and willingness to be guest speakers uh, at this event. Uh, exactly, this is the first time, but not the last. We hope that one day you will be able to attend directly on our beloved campus. And we also hope to develop cooperations in other fields because for the next year, we have a several international uh, program uh, such as uh, visiting lectures, uh, partnership, uh, research, maybe we can uh, collaborate with papers or publication, uh, some camp for student mobility and, and so on. We hope uh, that we can collaborate and learn a lot from you about uh, this program. We, we are ready to invite you back and we really look forward to visiting your university. Once again, thank you very much. We really appreciate for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So I, I have an announcement for this. So next year, 2023, our university, Nippon Sports Science University, will be host an international conference of mm. sports pedagogy and physical education and sports pedagogy. So you are all invited to come. Um, so this is an international conference. It's held uh, every five years. And then you can meet like uh, people come from uh, South Korea, uh, like other countries in ASEAN the countries and also a uh, European and American. So maybe it's uh, going to 2000, 200 or 300 people uh, will be coming, but it's not, not big, but it is still an international conference. So if you are interested in, uh, maybe I, I will uh, tell you the details once uh, decided. Uh, Detailed information. Yeah, sorry, this is an announcement for you. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, so probably this this is it. Uh, we've come to uh, end of this event. Um, thank you again, and then thank you for all of audience. Uh, I hope we can we we can get lots of lessons from this uh, guest lecture, and we'll see you on another event. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. See you at the next Yeah. Bye. 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 Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih Pak Bapak Yusuf. dan ya, ya Bapak dan Ibu yang saya hormati dan juga rekan-rekan mahasiswa terima kasih atas kehadirannya pada acara guest lecture pagi hari ini semoga kita senantiasa diberkahi dan diridhoi Allah Subhanahu wa taala dan uh, ilmu yang kita peroleh bisa bermanfaat sekali lagi terima kasih untuk semuanya pimpinan fakultas pimpinan Prodi, para dosen di FPOK dan juga para dosen di Prodi PJKR serta semua mahasiswa dan semua yang hadir pada kesempatan pagi hari ini. Terima kasih. Bila HTP Kuala Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam.
Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Ya. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak. Ya, terima kasih, Pak. Ya. Padian, Padian mohon Padian. Woi, di mana ini Pak Dian? Kok masih pakai masker nih? <laughs> Sedang asesmen Prof. Rekreasi Prof. PGSD. Oh, ya. ya. Gitu. <laughs> Oke, Pak Desandi ya, Pak Yusuf. Baik, Prof. Terima kasih Mohon banyak, terima kasih, Prof. Prof ya. Bapak Ibu semua, teman-teman mahasiswa, izin. Andif ya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.